India plans to unveil new names for several locations in Tibet. This initiative is seen as a direct response to China's recent renaming of 30 places in the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh. The move that had drawn strong objections from New Delhi. While no official government agency has released the names yet, the decision signals a robust strategy by the newly elected NDA government to counter Beijing's assertive narratives. My name is Hem Korsura and to discuss this development, we're now being joined by Ambassador Anil Trigunyath, former Indian diplomat and distinguished fellow Vivekananda International Foundation. So thank you so much for joining us on Vyond. Thank you very much. Sir, I want to begin by asking you, how do you view India's decision to rename places in Tibet? What will be the practical implications of this? Or do you think this is largely symbolic, a tit-for-tat move? Well, I think that if you know that uh, with China, we have had major problems all along. The biggest problem with China has been that it does not respect any agreements. There is no mutual respect, no mutual interest, and they don't respect the sensitivities of the country. We have been witnessing their hegemonistic approaches towards India. They have been naming uh, country, uh, various places in Arunachal and elsewhere. They have designs over the Indian territory and already occupied quite a bit of it which they are sitting on. Despite that, India has tried to work with them through dialogue and diplomacy. We have had 21 meetings of the, at the border among the generals. And we have had about certain important meetings as far as the uh, diplomatic uh, conversations are concerned. And they, this has been going on. But at the same time, the China continues to impinge on our sovereignty. Not only here, under the, you know about the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Also, we have seen uh, what uh, part of Kashmir that they took from uh, Pakistan, gifted to them virtually. So we have those problems. But at the same time, what India is doing is uh, designating certain places in uh, Tibet Autonomous Region, uh, 30 exactly to be precise, what they have been trying to do mm. uh, in a very similar manner. So it is, diplomacy is reciprocity. And they cannot continue to railroad India into this kind of a thing forever. And therefore, I'm happy that the government of India has decided uh, to designate uh, certain places in Tibet. And Tibet's history with India is not from now. It is even from Mahabharata days, we know that there was one of the, one, uh, some of the uh, Tibetans have done this research that the Tibetans also were somehow, somehow the descendants of Rupati, one of the uh, generals of uh, Korvas. Uh, so we go back thousands of years. It's not from now. And since then, India has always stood uh, by Tibet. Mm. Of course, there are political, uh, we have made certain mistakes in the past, but I think it's time to correct and to, to tell China clearly that they cannot continue to have hegemonistic designs over India's sovereign territory by inventing names, whereas India is doing a historic research and through the historic connect is trying to do that. All right, diplomacy is reciprocity. Uh, sir, I also want to understand one of the many challenges that the Modi 3.0 government has prioritized. It does mention China as well. How do you think the government will be able to tackle an increasingly aggressive and assertive China on all fronts? I think, that, I mean, my view personally, China is going to be our challenge in every geography, mm -hmm. including our own borders, and we need to be prepared for that. Uh, one thing is that this government also very clearly understands, and as Dr. Jashankar has also mentioned about it only two days ago, the China and Pakistan need to be handled on the same pattern. And the China understands after Galwan that India is not, cannot be weak. And so India is a standing form. Uh, on protecting its territory and territorial sovereignty in the bilateral domain. Mm. On the international domain also, wherever possible, we are cooperating with them and for the larger good of the world. But at the same time, on our own sovereign issues, there is no compromise, there is no let up, it will not happen. In my view, gradually, we will see that India's opening up with the three T's, that is very critical for us. One is Tibet, other is Taiwan, and the third one is going to be technological superiority. So I think these are the three things India will have to work very strongly in order to convey the right kind of messaging to China and to prepare and to develop our own comprehensive power. All right, Ambassador, you've pretty much summed it up. In fact, I was going to come to this next. But just for better understanding here, uh, currently assessing where things stand, how do you see relations evolving between India and China going forward? Well, it'll, a lot will depend on China. Mm -hmm. uh, if the Chinese continue to have this kind of a path, then the relationship cannot be uh, hunky-dory. It cannot be business as usual. Of course, our trade, they have become our trading partner and briefly in the goods as the largest trading partner also. 
Uh, that is the, the, the way it is. But China has to see also that what is in their own interest. Is it their own interest to continue uh, to, to uh, you know, antagonize India all the time? Or is it better that they work together in different areas to uh, counter global challenges that are occurring in this fractious world order? So it is for China, actually. But India is ready. I think and India knows it. We want uh, good relations with China, but they cannot be on hegemonistic term of the Chinese. All right. Well, Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond with your insights on this. Thank you very much. For latest news, download the Beyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.